I want to talk a little bit about Zionism. Yes. Uh, because I've been looking at some of the history of Zionism. And let me, I just took a few notes here. And let me just go through some of these notes quickly to make my point. Back in 1820, my God, that's about that, not, not long after the founding of America. Back in 1820, a guy named Mordecai Noah uh, with other Jews uh-huh. tried to set up a Zionist homeland for the Jews in New York uh-huh. uh, on Grand Island in New York. 1820, huh. uh, there was a Jewish guy named Mordecai Noah, and he tried to set up with a bunch of other Jews uh-huh. what, we, what would be called the, the homeland for the Jews in New right. York. Well, it right. didn't work. So in 1903, the British colonial secretary, Joseph uh, Chamberlain, he suggested to the Zionist uh, Theodore Herzl, this is 1903, a homeland for the Jews would be perfect at Mau Plateau, as M-A-U Plateau, in Kenya, Africa. And the, the idea was put forth called the Uganda Program. So right. in, uh, the British, uh, you know, colonial secretary uh, said a great place for the for the Jewish homeland would be in, in in Africa, in Kenya. Well, that didn't work, so they move on. And two years later, in 1905, a large group of angry and frustrated European Jews formed an organization called the Jewish Territorialist Organization. The aim of which was to be was stated by the founders as to just find and establish a Jewish homeland on the earth somewhere, somewhere. Right. But uh, that didn't work either. Then in March of, of 1928, then in the Soviet Union, it was suggested that in the Russian Far East, in an area called Komzet, K-O-M-Z-E-T. Uh huh. Near the uh, Armur, Armur uh, River, A-M-U-R River, there could be a perfect homeland for the Jews, uh, that all the Jews could come to the Soviet Union, to uh, the far east section of the Soviet, Soviet Union, and set up their own homeland there. And um, this was uh, because Joseph Stalin loved the Jews so much that he wanted to have a new communist uh, homeland for the Jews, uh, and it was called the Jewish Autonomous Oblast, O-B-L-A-S-T, the Jewish Autonomous Oblast that right. uh, that Joseph uh, Stalin, he called it the Soviet Zion. Hmm. It would be a wonderful communist homeland for the Jews, uh, And but after a while that didn't work either, so that fell through. In fact, earlier in the Soviet Union, around another idea was suggested for a homeland for the Jews could be placed in the Crimea or the Ukraine area. But the Ukrainians were not impressed or interested, so that fell through too. And then it was in revealed in 1979 book called The Fugo Plan, spelled F-U-G-U. The Fugo Plan was the name of the book. And in it, it uh, allegedly talked about, it talked about 1934, Japan allegedly offered a place in Japan for the Zion, uh, for Zionism to have a homeland for the Jews in Japan. Well, that didn't work out very well at all. So forget that. Then in 1938, Hitler's Nazi Germany, the Third Reich, came up with a new idea to form a new Zionist state off the coast of Africa, East Africa. And Madagascar. By all, the, all the Jews that they could find would be sent to the island of Madagascar. Uh, but that, of course, that didn't work out either. So we move on. Then in 1940, in the UK, British, the British thought that they could build a Zionist homeland for the Jews in British Guyana, which is today just Guyana. Uh-huh. Uh, but after thinking about it for a while, uh, they said, forget it, and it ain't going to work, so that's it. Then in 1930, uh, another brilliant idea was suggested by a British Zionist League. It's called the British Zionist League, that uh, the idea was that in the Kimberley region of Australia, there would be a perfect place for the Jewish homeland in uh, what they call the Kimberley region of Australia. Mm-hmm. And that was open to the Jews to have their their homeland there. 
But after thinking about it for a bit, the Australian government said, no, I don't think so in our backyard, so forget it. So that fell through. Shortly afterwards, uh, the premier, the prime minister of Tens, Tens, Tasmania, mm -hmm. his name was Robert Cosgrove. He came up, the, the premier of Tanzania came up with a dazzling, brilliant idea. He suggested a homeland for the Jews in an area called Port Davy area of southwest Tasmania. But he died immediately after bringing up the subject. He died, and everyone said, forget it. Uh, it's a bad idea anyway, so that, that, that didn't go anywhere. Then uh, finally, God steps in. Uh, finally, God steps in to save the Jewish homeland for the Jews. God's chosen people finally got the help from God that they needed, uh, you know, for their homeland. And so the God was, the, his name was Baron Rothschild uh, of the Satanic Illuminati fame. So Rothschild called them one of his male whores named Lord Arthur, uh, Arthur Balfour. Yeah. And appointed him to be the chief butt kisser in the British Israel Illuminati Masters. And was he ever? Yeah. Boy. And so that, and so the rest is history. Then today we have Rothschild and Balfour went to play in their favorite sandbox, uh, called the UN. <laughs> and they came up with a great idea for a homeland for God's chosen people. And the idea was as simple as it was brilliant. They said, well, where would uh, uh, ancient Israel, if it ever existed, which in point of fact that was I was going to talk about tonight, it never did exist. There was no ancient Israel on the earth, period. But the idea Balfour and Lord Rothschild came up with is if there was an ancient Israel, where would it have been? And they said, well, obviously it would have been in the Middle East. They said, okay, then let's go to the Middle East. And find some people, uh, you know, who are docile, who have lived there, you know, for all these thousands of years, never hurt anyone. Why don't we go in and pull, like Adolf Hitler did, a blitzkrieg? We'll pull into town at three o'clock in the morning with tanks and scare the hell out of everybody and kill anybody that gets in our way. And then we will scream in their faces that God gave this land to me. Uh huh. Yeah, they, uh -huh. God gave this land all to me. All contrived, they, all of it. Yeah. But, why didn't they tell the other 14 places that they kept trying to get into that God gave me this <laughs> land? <laughs> and so they just asked permission. Could we have found the homeland here? No, get going. And so 14 times later, they finally decided to go to the Middle East, and now they can say, God gave us this land, this land is mine. Which, of course, the Palestinians were wondering, what the hell are you talking about? We've been here for 6,000 years, and nobody knows who you are. You're from Europe, airhead. And so the bottom line is, is that Zionism is just a political movement that is designed to do one thing and it hasn't got anything, and I want to make this clear, Zionism has nothing to do whatsoever with the Jewish people as a people. Uh, that's a whole nother story is who are the Jewish people, where did they right. come from, and is there, in fact, a legitimacy uh, to this whole idea of an ancient Israel? Well, in point of fact, no. Ancient Israel never existed, ah, period. How interesting. And, and we know that scientifically now. We, uh, there are too many, uh, good and, uh, intellectually honest, uh, professors, teachers, scientists in the state of Israel today, which are writing books and more and more is coming out every day, uh, saying that, uh, the, the history of the Jewish people uh, and the ancient Israel was all invented, probably by the Knights Templars in the 9th, 10th, and 11th century A.D. in Europe. They came up with the idea that there was an ancient Israel and the ancient people of Israel and that Old Testament, and that it was, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of uh -huh, years ago. Uh -huh. I now am completely convinced, because of what I've seen and talked to all the uh, experts over the years, that the whole concept of an ancient Israel in the ancient Middle East was bull. Never huh. happened. There wow. was no such a place Shocker. as ancient Israel. Shocker. And, the, li the lies are endless. Endless yep. lies. Wow. And so there, there, are, there are so many books 
here's what's important. There are so many books and authors coming out of the state of Israel today. Uh, the professor, uh, oh, all these different names in my head right now, but um, they're writing books and, and, and giving lectures out on the, on the web. You can go and listen to these lectures. Uh-huh. Of the Jewish uh, researchers, Jewish writers, uh, academics, professors, etc., talking about there was no ancient Israel. It was dreamt up most likely in the 9th, 10th, 11th century A.D. in Europe. There was no ancient Israel. The whole thing is a story. But the reason why that story was put forth is because the Vatican wanted a legitimate uh, foundation on which to build a world religion. And so if they wanted to build a world religion based mm-hmm. on Jesus, which was mm-hmm. a new concept, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the world was already got, we already got the Buddhas and all kinds of, of saviors. What do we need this, this new one? So right. the Vatican realized that it needed a legitimate foundation on which to build their empire. And so the best way to do that is to show that Jesus came out of a civilization called ancient Israel. And so it wasn't the Vatican that was so holy. It was ancient mm-hmm. Israel that was so holy. And the mm-hmm. Vatican is carrying on the great work of the ancient Israel with the new mm-hmm. Messiah. Mm-hmm. And so the bottom line is that uh, the, the whole story of ancient Israel, and this is why the, the Zionists who were concerned about a, 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 a homeland for the Jews went to about 14 different places before they finally decided to shout in somebody's face that God gave us this land And this was my land. God gave it to me. And I'm thinking, why didn't you say that on the other 14 times? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's ludicrous. It is absolutely on the face ludicrous that that Zionism was designed to uh, to provide a homeland for the Jews. When in point of point of fact, factually, there never was an ancient Israel or an ancient Jewish people. There never was. There was. And so when you start reading all of the reference books and listening to the lectures of all the the guys coming out of Israel, what they're talking about is becoming overwhelmingly obvious that we have been lied to and set up a long time ago. And when you get into theology, I've been doing this for many years. I'm looking at it from, uh, for, for many years. I'm telling you, there is an extraordinary story of betrayal and lies that, uh, just, uh, it's so unbelievable that that's why it works. It's so absolutely in your face unbelievable that nobody would believe it. But once you begin to see the, the, uh-huh. the telltale signs, it's all there. Religion. Religion. The fraud. Yeah. 